Hello and welcome to another Solo Board Gaming Presents and today, if you haven't already worked it out, we are looking at Dual Powers Revolution 1917. Uh, it's a game from Thunderworks Games and uh, designed by Brett Myers. Um, straight away, and certainly what attracted me to this game, apart from the fact that um, uh, I do enjoy the history of this period in general, um, but one of the things that attracted me to this game is that box art. It's just fantastic box art and, and a great choice as regards the theme of the game itself. Um, the colour uh, palette that's used, uh, the style which is very reminiscent of uh, those Soviet posters that you see, you know, throughout the uh, early Soviet era. Um, uh, an almost brutalist type of art if you like. I'm sure there's a much better name for it than that, but um, and the box art certainly evokes that period. Um, and obviously you've got uh, Lenin himself on the front and uh, not 100% sure about this guy here. Um, for me, I'm quite sure that's Kerensky. Um, one time leader of the provisional government. Um, I may be wrong. Um, if you think different, please let me know. Uh, but I'm fairly happy that that's Kerensky. Uh, and of course, the uh, peasant burdened down by his load there. Um, fantastic box art. Really, really good. Uh, that's continued. Um, into the rule book. Uh, again, that great art um, on the front. And it's a cool rule book. Um, it's not a big rule book. It's, this is not rules heavy at all. Um, it's a full colour book. It breaks down the rules into uh, very easy sections. Uh, I'm not sure how many pages this is. Let's just uh, get to the end. Have a look. Explains the iconography. Um, it's a very nicely set out uh, rule book. Uh, and in fact, I think this is the end, what, nine pages? Uh, and I think then the solitaire rules. Yeah, game end. Um, certainly less than 10 pages. For the rules for the uh, two-player uh, two player game and it's a fantastic incredibly competitive two-player game but it, there's also a brilliant uh, solitaire variant and that's what we'll be covering mainly today Old, uh, Vladimir Ilyich Lenin on the back there and again the theme continues um, uh, on the board itself, uh, which is a stylized representation uh, of a map of uh, Petrograd, modern day St. Petersburg, uh, divided by the, uh, uh, all the waterways and canals here uh, into six different districts, again brightly colored, uh, carrying that Soviet poster like theme. Um, uh, and each district has its colour, white, blue, red, green, purple and yellow or brown here. Um, and also contains uh, uh, an icon, the hammer and sickle, uh, battleship Aurora, uh, the communist flag, uh, the Soviet star, the imperial crown, and what's this one, um, uh, an industrial area. Um, uh, with that factory symbol there. Um, uh, so again, very, very bright, great presence on the table. Great way to introduce, I think, people to this kind of game who aren't normally um, uh, uh, too comfortable, maybe, 
Um, they may think it's a political game or a war game. Um, it contains elements of everything, I suppose, but it, it, it's, it's a fairly easy to understand area control game uh, that's played uh, just over four rounds or even three rounds for the uh, solitaire um, uh, version and plays very, very quickly. This game will play uh, in uh, from setup to finish uh, 45 minutes. And the solitaire game may be a little uh, quicker than that. Uh, and we'll do a full playthrough um, uh, in the next video um, uh, to show how quick that goes. And believe you me, it's the kind of game where you get to the end of it, uh, one person or the other has won, the other one's lost, obviously. Um, but then you say to yourself, gosh, is that it? 45 minutes? Best out of three. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and instantly you want to get back into it again and play the next game. Because although the rules are fairly simple, the various strategies tend to start coming to light over several plays. And the, uh, the strategies can be quite intense and fairly convoluted. So what else do we have on the board uh, apart from the map itself? Well, um, at the top here, there is space for a secret objective card that each player will place face down, keep it secret from the opponent. And they will be, and, and, and the secret objective card will denote which of these areas has been chosen as that player's secret objective for this particular game turn. Plays a bit differently in the solo game, but we'll come to that. At the top here, we have the uh, calendar, um, which is also a game timer as well, if you like, because uh, the two player game will finish on the turn, uh, at, will finish at the end of a turn in October or November. Um, and it'll finish at the end of that particular turn. So that's what I mean by the game timer element of it. But we'll come to that in more detail in a moment. We have a day marker. Nice wooden piece. Like so. And a month marker. Which marks the months which run across the top. But we'll have, again, we'll have a closer look in a moment. Um, we have uh, a nice uh, uh, wooden piece here, which is a blockade marker, barricades, which will blockade or barricade one of the, we'll treat them as bridges, one of the bridges that pass or that allow passage from area to area. And this blockade marker can be moved around during the game. Down the bottom here, on this side of the board, we have the victory track. Uh, this acts like a pendulum because it's a tug of war between this side, the provisional government, and this side, the Petrograd Soviet uh, slash the, the Bolsheviks. Um, and basically, as each area is scored at the end of each turn, it will move this wooden marker one way or the other. If the wooden marker ever goes all the way to one end, I've not had that happen. I've only played about five games of this, um, but fairly quickly, one after the other. Um, so I think you'd have to play fairly poorly <laughs> or be really unlucky for the game to end in such a way. But basically, when the last turn is played, whoever has the victory marker uh, in their side of this seesaw track uh, will win the game. Um, 
We'll come on to the other um, smaller parts of the board in one second. Uh, I think first of all, we'll take a look at the calendar. As you can see, the calendar shows the days of the month from 1 to 31. And as you play each card, each card, and we'll take a look at those in a moment, will instruct you to move the calendar a certain number of days. If you finish your turn on either of these two action squares, the 15th or the 31st of the month, you'll be able to carry out an extra action. If you cause the day marker to advance beyond the 31st and therefore change the month, the will of the people is now yours. If it was yours already, you would merely keep it. If the will of the people was in the hands of the opposition, you would take and, and have the will of the people. Again, in a moment, we'll explain why that is so very, very important. And so the marker moves through the days of the month, through the months of the year, and, and in, each in each turn, the day marker will probably move certainly a month, maybe a month and a half per turn as cards are played throughout the game. Now, if we look at some of the cards, there's plenty of cards as well. Look at the artwork on those cards. Again, very reminiscent, very, very thematic of the rest of the game. Fits in perfectly. Um, the cards are not complicated. Let's take a look at a couple. Let's look at this one. Let's look at a blue one. And because we've got the white area there, let's look at a white one. It's a card driven game. And uh, each player will start with five cards in hand at the start of every turn and play those cards onto the game each turn. Now each card, the first thing you do when you play a card is you look in the top right corner and there's a number. Playing this card will advance the calendar track two days or four days or six days. So that's the first thing you do. So having played that card You'd first of all move the calendar, two days. The next part of the action is to play either uh, the recruit action, which is at the top, or the special action, which is at the bottom. This card will recruit one token into the white area. This card will recruit two strength tokens into the green area and this card will recruit three strength tokens into the blue area. Here we have an example of a token and again look at the quality of that. Look how large first of all it is and the thickness of this heavy duty cardboard. Um, they almost feel wooden, to be honest. They're not, um, but it feels that way. So this is a three strength token. So if I just played that card, I could put a three strength token into the blue area in an effort to control that area. As an alternative, I could turn over a token 
from its exhausted side to its default side, its full strength side. At the moment, that's on a full strength side, watch. Once it's been used in an area action, it'll become exhausted. And now it's only worth two. So I could play this card to not use the recruit action, but instead to use that action and to turn it back over, like so. Or if I played this card, I could use a strength one, recruit strength one into the white area. Or I could move one token, any one token, up to two spaces. I could move this token one space. Or I could move this token, because it can be any token, two spaces. It could go here and then uh, here, for instance. And finally, the other card will allow me to recruit a two strength unit into the green area, like so. Or I could use it to move any one token one space. So this token, for instance, could happily move across to the purple area. Now, as well as their hand of five cards each turn, each player also has their leader cards. We have the leader cards for the provisional government and the leader cards for the Bolsheviks or the Petrograd Soviet. And interestingly, uh, each player can be given these biography cards, look, which basically give you a biography of each of the characters with their image on one side and a photograph from the Times on the other. Uh, there's Joseph Stalin, who at the time basically was Lenin's runner, um, his en enabler, if you like. Horrible man. Um, so there we go. So uh, let's take a look at the leaders for the provisional government. We have Kornilov, we have Dvov, and we have Kerensky. And again, if you play one of these cards, the first thing you do is advance the calendar and look at these big advances. So these are powerful cards. Remember we spoke about manipulating that calendar? Um, you've actually got to be careful when you play these cards. Um, you don't want to waste them. Uh, when you do play, for instance, if we play Kerensky here, we advance the calendar 11 days and we put Kerensky's token, there he is, on the board, a two strength token. So he goes in any particular area, wherever you want him. Powerful, powerful thing to do is to play one of your characters. But once they're played, they're on the board and they get exhausted. And if they get exhausted again, they're removed from the game. So you need to be careful when you play them and look after them, if you like, uh, once they're on the board. Kerensky also uh, has a special power. This green icon here means that when he's played, he can steal the will of the people from the opponent. That's one of two ways to steal the will of the people. The other way, if you remember, was to advance the calendar in a single move beyond the 31st of the month, and that also steals the will of the people. Uh, we will explain very, very shortly again why this is so very, very important. 
briefly, uh, we've got Lvov, uh, and there's his token to go on the board. Uh, he's weaker on his exhausted side look. He's, w he's worth um, uh, uh, two strength points on this side, but only one uh, on his exhausted side. He'll advance the calendar 10 days, uh, but his special talent, if you like, is to uh, uh, control the spies. So by playing this card, this card allows you to look at the hidden objective, the secret objective of your opponent. Powerful card. Slightly different in the solitaire game. We'll come on to that in the next video. And this one here, uh, uh, General Kornilov. There he is. Uh, and look at this one. He's worth two strength points when you first play him into an area. But on his exhausted side, he's the worst of all of them. Minus one. So you don't want that to happen. Hopefully not anyway. But what, what else will we do? We, when played, he will advance a calendar nine days. And this symbol here is the uh, uh, barricade or the blockade. And that will allow you to move the barricade token to any other of the bridges on the board. Potentially to block somebody off from reinforcing an area. So these cards are potentially quite powerful. Very, very quickly, let's look at the uh, three leader cards for uh, the Petrograd Soviet with the red backs. And here they are. We have Zinoviev. We have uh, Vladimir Lenin. And we have Josef Stalin. And again, uh, powerful cards. Be careful how you play them. They advance the calendar quite significantly, each one, and each one has those special abilities. To uh, look at your opponent's secret objective card, uh, to uh, take back, to claim the will of the people token. I love that token, uh, wooden token, fist holding a hammer. Hardly subtle, was it? So. <laughs> Um, uh, but a great symbol. Uh, or to move the uh, barricades. And once again, each one has their relevant token, like so. Oops, daisies. There and there. I'm glad to say that uh, Stalin is only worth one, and on his exhausted side, zero. So there you go. So, so those are the leader cards. Now, the leader cards, uh, you'll have your three leader cards at the start of the game. They're not renewed each turn. These leader cards have to last for your game. So once played, uh, once used for their particular um, uh, action, uh, they're on the board. Um, and you don't have those cards to play again, if you see what I mean. So those are the special leader cards. Now, let's get to the bottom of this will of the people that I keep going on about, but never quite explaining. Here we are. So the will of the people token always starts with the Petrograd Soviets, with the Bolsheviks over here. Um, and the idea is we want to try and, if you're the provisional government, you want to try and steal that over to your side and so on and so on. They don't want to, 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 to steal it back. So this will often seesaw. Why? Well, the will of the people controls the third type of token in the game. Don't forget, each side have their relevant tokens worth various strengths to go in the different areas. But there's a third kind of token, and there's six of them. And these are the people. 
They are Will of the People tokens. And the, I mean, I'm just placing them all down here at the moment. But they'll actually go one in each area at the start of the game. Shuffled up, place randomly one in each area at the end of the game. And as you can see, uh, they're worth one point uh, on the um, uh, uh, live side, if you like. And on the exhausted side, also one point, also one point. This one, though, becomes a zero when it's turned over. It's no longer worth anything. This one, the strength increases. It goes from one to two. There's some great strategies here to, to, to check very, very carefully. It makes the game even deeper. As I say, uh, very simple rules, but the strategy is very, very deep. Like so. So one of those goes into each area at the start of uh, your game. Now, the person who controls the will of the people controls the strength shown on the people tokens. Okay? So, let's just say... Uh, Provisional government, opposition, whoops, knocking the board about. Provisional government token, opposition token, in this purple area here. And also, there's a will of the people token. If this area is scored at the end of this particular turn, I have two points, the opposition has two points. Whoever has the will of the people controls the people. So at the moment, with the Bolsheviks having the will of the people, I will have two points. The opposition will have three points. They will win that area. However, just before scoring, if I can wrestle this away from the Bolsheviks over to my side, I would control the will of the people. So that's why that token and the, the methods of wrestling it from your opponent is so very, very important. Uh, to bump up your points uh, during each um, uh, uh, scoring phase at the end of each turn. There are six areas, as we've said before, six different coloured areas on the board. Only three will be scored at the end of each turn. First of all, there's the unrest area, the area of unrest. One of the six colours will be an area of unrest. And we have six more really chunky tokens here, <laughs> each containing an area icon and an area colour. Those are shuffled at the beginning of the game, placed down at the side of the board. One of them will become the area of unrest, here we go, for our first turn, it's Battleship Aurora, the blue area. And one of them will contain the blockade token. Blockade, like so. So we'll put our blockade token on the red bridge over here. And this area will be the area of unrest for this turn. So we'll be the first one to be scored. And this signifies that that will be the first area to be scored for this turn. The second area to be scored will be my secret objective. So that's not going to go anywhere at the moment because my opponent doesn't know where that is. The third area to be scored each turn will be the opponent's secret objective area. And that won't be shown until we know where that area will be. They're secrets. 
So we start off knowing only one of the three areas which are going to be scored. What we don't know is what our opponent's secret objective is. And in fact, in the solitaire game, we don't even know uh, what our secret objective is, but I'll explain that at the start of the next um, uh, video. Um, and in a nutshell, that's an overall profile of the main game. Um, so it's card driven um, and we're always carrying out uh, one of two types of action. Uh, we're either recruiting or we're taking a special action and we're advancing the uh, calendar. Oh, one more thing about the cards. Notice that in the bottom right corner, each one has a big bold number. That is only used for um, secret objective scoring. So if that was my, if I'd chosen that card, the blue area, as my secret objective, and placed it face down uh, on this secret objective uh, space on the board, whoever wins that area will score three points or two points or four points, for instance. So yeah, uh, in a nutshell, uh, that's the game. Um, uh, again, uh, it's a fast paced game, beautifully themed, uh, and definitely one of those games where you finish your first game and then the first thing you want to say is best out of three or best out of five, you want to go again um, to try and achieve what maybe you couldn't achieve uh, during the first game. Or you've noticed a strategy that you didn't notice early enough in your first game. So in the next video, uh, we will very, very quickly uh, set up a, uh, a solitaire play and play through the three rounds of a solitaire game. Thanks. See you in a sec.